Hello, I'm Chef Johnny Stewart. Welcome to Texas Style Cuisine. Tonight, I'm going to show you how to make chicken fried venison backstrap and cream gravy. All right, and here is our backstrap. We have uh, the backstrap, or a portion of a backstrap, off of a dough we got this season. And as you can see, there's a little bit of the silver skin or the sinew on it. I like to trim that off. You can't even chew through it. If you go to a uh, deer processing plant and you ask for your backstraps to be butterflied, what they do is, is they start on the back side where they've cut it off the bone. They cut down to that sinew to fold it over so they all have that sinew on it. And so I do not get mine uh, butterflied if I go to a, a retailer to, to do that for me. We do them here at the house. We pull all that, that silver skin or sinew off and we just discard it and then we have all of our backstrap for us. Uh, sinew, I tell you how tough it is, is the Indians use those strands of sinew dried out to tie their arrowheads onto the shafts of their arrows. So it's not anything you want to chew on. And so we take that off. These, most of these have been peeled off and uh, they're looking pretty good. But what I'm going to do is, is venison can be tough. So I just take it and I just pound them a little bit. I just have a, a pounder here and I just take it and we're going to tenderize them. Don't have to be a whole lot, but we're just going to take them. And as you can see, they're not, not great big steaks. These were uh, some nice does we shot this year. They ought to be good and tender anyways. But I'm just going to pound them out just a little to tender them up some. Put these in a, another plate. All right, and you can see that those are pounded out a little bit flatter. The, uh, the points on here have tenderized this meat. Going to make them a lot easier to, to eat so they're not so tough. But they will chicken up, chicken fry up real nice. All right, I'm going to move my cutting board out of the way. And I have my breading station set up. Set this up, called a breading station. But what it is, is plain flour. It's a milk and egg wash, and then my seasoned flour. The flour, I just seasoned it with salt, pepper, and a little bit of garlic. Not a lot of garlic. Uh, I don't, really don't want people to know, hey, there's garlic in there. I'd rather them go, hey, what's that other flavor? So just subtly in the background, I do have some garlic on it. Hmm. All right, now the thing to remember is when you're breading is you always keep a dry hand and a wet hand. So this is going to be my wet hand. This is going to be my dry hand. So I'm going to put a little flour on here. Uh, first time, I just lightly flour them. It is plain flour. There's no seasonings in this one. Then what I do is, is I take them when they're dry, drop them in my milk, and I move them to the other side, where once again, I bread them. Now, if I were to use both hands for wet and both hands for dry, you'd wind up with big clumps of flour for fingers. And we don't want that, so we're going to be careful not to do that. All right. There goes the dry. Pick it up with the wet. Cover it with flour. Pick up the dry. Go with the wet. Drop it in the dry. I'm pressing down nice and hard on that because I want this flour to really bind to it. Get up kind of in the cracks and crevices there that we made when we were softening it a while ago, tenderizing it. Anyways, let me finish getting these breaded and then we'll get right back to you. All right, here we're getting ready to do our frying. We'll see if it's hot enough. Plenty hot. 
You might think that's unsanitary. I guess your spit cooks away. That's that's the way I was taught to do it. Of course, in the in the kitchen when I'm cooking for people, I would just uh, take a little water. Or you can take a little bit of your flour. Some of y'all that are not familiar with uh, venison or wild game, when people are talking about back straps, what they're talking about is is the loin that runs down the the backbone. Uh, this would be where your pork chops come from, where your T bones come from, where your your T bone is is the is the top and the inside tenderloin uh, this is the loin up on top so this would be like a pork loin beef loin anything like that all right all of our steaks are made now it's time for me to make the cream gravy so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the same frying pan it's already hot I'm gonna pour off the oil and I'm gonna leave just a couple of tablespoons of oil in there of course you can see there's some flour in the bottom of there residual flour that was in there the definition of a roux, and that's what I'm going to make first here, is equal parts of fat and flour by weight. So, a lot of people uh, think it's just equal parts flour and fat. Not the case. It's equal parts of flour and fat by weight. Now, this can be a little bit, little bit darker uh, because of the color of the roux here. Because it's pretty hot and it's brown and pretty fast. Do not want to burn it. If you go too fast, you can burn a roux and then there's nothing to do but throw it out. Okay, now time for the milk. Now I'm gonna pour in some nice cold milk. Stir this in. Now remember, when you're making gravy, you add cold liquid, to a hot roux or you add cold roux to a hot liquid. Now you can turn the fire up a little bit. This flour will not start thickening this gravy until it comes to a boil. So a lot of times people put it in there and they think boy it's not thick. The reason why is they have not waited long enough. I'm going to keep stirring this to get the lumps out. And as it thickens up It is looking pretty. Just keep that moving. The roux was a little bit dark because I used the flour that was in the pan. If I would have taken that flour out or used a, a clear pan, wouldn't be as dark of a cream gravy. Want to taste it? Okay, now all we need to do is season it. I'm going to turn it way down. I'm going to add salt and pepper to my cream gravy. And I tell you what, I don't think I've ever measured my salt and pepper content in my gravy. It's always just uh, to taste. Kind of how I look at it, I sprinkle a little bit in and go from there. I do like my cream gravies a little bit peppery. I guess as you can tell. Probably a little bit thick. I'm probably going to add just a little more milk to this. Because you got to realize when your gravy cools off, it is going to thicken then. Okay. That's got a good flavor to it. We might thin the flavor out a little bit right here. But let's work in this last little bit of gravy, our last little bit of milk into our gravy. Oh yeah, that's looking nice. It's a little bit thick, and as it cools, it will get thicker. All right, our gravy is done. It's thickening up some. Okay, there's our plate of chicken fried steak looking really nice. And we're gonna take some of our chicken fried steak and put it on a plate with our mashed potatoes. My son made these mashed potatoes for us a while ago while I was out here doing this. They still have the skins on. We're not one for always taking off the skins. Anyways, you can see that. And I'm going to take some cream gravy. Put it 
you're right across the top. Planning on my mashed potatoes. Okay, and there we have it. Chicken fried venison backstrap with mashed potatoes and cream gravy. Hope you enjoyed it. Appreciate you coming back to Texas Style Cuisine. It's always a pleasure to have you all here. We really appreciate it. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. Give us a like down there. Subscribe our channel. Look for some other videos. We have many of them coming on. We try to put a new one up every week for you. So you'll be able to look and find something else that you enjoy on Texas Style Cuisine. Also, if there's a recipe you would like to see, something you would like to see cooked, might be something I can do. And we'd be more than happy to try to get that on and get a video of it shot for you so that you could see it. Once again, thanks for visiting. We're always glad you're here. See you next time on Texas Style Cuisine.